Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. You know, there's a revolutionary new device that can help the millions of Americans with the common and often, well, embarrassing problem of incontinence. As I said, it's a common condition and happens because of problems with the muscles and the nerves that help the bladder hold or release urine. Joining us now with more on the latest development is Dr. Karen Noblet. She's joining us here as Chief Medical Officer at Exonix, the company that developed this cutting edge device and Jill, a woman who had suffered from incontinence. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, both Dr. Noblet and Jill. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you, Neil. It's a pleasure to be here. Nice to be here. Doctor, if you would give us some insight into the problem of incontinence. Yeah, Neil, you know, urinary incontinence is something that obviously I treated um, as a urogynecologist in my practice, you know, for over 20 years. So it's something that I pay attention to. It's a very prevalent condition. However, it's also a very undertreated condition. Many women that suffer from urinary incontinence suffer in silence. Um, it may be that they're afraid to talk about it. They're embarrassed to talk about it. And they just don't know that there are great options for therapy out there. Now, incontinence, um, you know, it's not a life-threatening condition, but it has a significant impact on quality of life. And when you look at that, it really can affect all domains of quality of life. And that's really important for our patients. Jill, if you would, tell us a bit about yourself and then tell us how incontinence has impacted your life. Sure. Um, so I am 39 years old. I am a wife and mother of four, and I live in South Dakota. And it, is a, it had impacted my life in many ways. Um, it made it very difficult for me to go to a movie, go out to dinner with my family, camp, um, I gave up hiking, and working out was very difficult. Now, is this a condition that, you know, you were going to the bathroom three, four times a day, five? When, how how severe was your incontinence? Um, 27 to 29 times a wow. day. Wow. So extremely life-impacting, to say the least. Oh, absolutely. I didn't sleep through the night. I would get up three times a night just to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. So. I was always tired, really didn't feel like I was in control of my life. Mm -hmm. Dr. Noblet, what do you say to patients who believe that incontinence is just a part of aging? I mean, surely many of us will experience some type of incontinence, but are we talking about incontinence that has you going to the bathroom like all day, or are we talking about a little bit of inconvenience as you hit 60, 70, maybe 80 years old? You know, one of the things I say to, to women that say, oh, I just thought this was a normal part of aging. I say it is more common as you get older, and more mm-hmm. common with aging in both men and women, but it's not a normal part. It's not normal to leak urine. And sure. that's where we want to empower them to speak up and say, you know, this is bothering me, and I'd like to talk about some treatment options. Now, there may be some people who have very minor symptoms and, learn how to deal with it. But there's a a recent study that, you know, estimated that almost 25% of women that suffer from urinary incontinence have moderate to severe symptoms. Mm. And when you think about moderate to severe, you know, this is really impacting uh, their daily activities, their ability to participate, you know, in the things that are important to them. Now, you mentioned that there are options to uh, deal with this problem. What has the the go-to been, I I guess, over the last decade or so? What's been the go-to solution? Well, many women will do what we call Kegel exercises or pelvic floor exercises. That's something that is commonly recommended even by primary care physicians um, to try to strengthen the pelvic floor to stop that urge. Many women use over-the-counter products I'll use. Uh, pads, panty liners, and even diapers. And I think you've probably noticed that in any drugstore that you go into, there's now an aisle that's devoted to incontinence um, products. And so, again, that leads back into that false thought process that this is a normal part of aging. They see these products on the on the shelf, and it's like, well, I'm not the only one that suffers from it, so this, this you know, they're selling this. This must be the treatment option mm-hmm. for me. So they may default just to wearing pads and diapers. Um, You know, if they do make it to a a physician that is asking them about this for urgency incontinence when, you know, that sense to to go to the bathroom is 
um, you know, very uh, urgent, compelling. They need to rush to get to the bathroom. They may not make it. Um, they can be offered medications. Um, but unfortunately, when we look at studies, you know, up to 80% of patients have stopped their medication by one year. Mm-hmm. Um, and they may stop it because of side effects. They may not be meeting their goals for uh, treatment therapy, uh, improvement. Uh, it may be the cost or a combination of those things. Mm-hmm. And that's where we get into more advanced therapies. And, and this is where, you know, we would like to help improve the recognition um, increase awareness about this condition and let patients know there are treatment options beyond those pelvic floor exercises and beyond the medication. Now, Exonix has developed a device that I understand has a, a high rate of success for dealing with incontinence. Explain how this revolutionary new device can help those that we've been talking about this morning. Yeah, Neil, the, the device um, that we have is it's called sacral neuromodulation. And the Axonix device um, has revolutionized really the sacral neuromodulation arena. We have a miniaturized implantable neurostimulator. It lasts 15 plus years in the body. Um, And what it does is there's a small lead that is placed adjacent to one of the nerves that controls the pelvic floor, including the bladder and bowel. And it gives gentle uh, pulses that restore the normal signaling process between the brain and the bladder. So the thought is that there's some kind of, you know, miscommunication between the brain and the bladder, you know, making the patient go more often or not being able to control their bladder. And that by restoring that normal communication, it can restore normal function. And the great thing about this therapy is the patients can try it. For myself as a surgeon, I couldn't offer any other surgical procedure where the patient could try it ahead of time. But with this therapy, there's a, a test, you know, we take it, say you can take it for a test drive, mm-hmm. uh, see if it works for you. You can decide whether or not it's, it's a benefit enough and then go on to the full implant. For the trial, um, the lead um, can be placed as a temporary lead done in just an office procedure. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to go to the hospital. You don't have to have anything but local anesthesia, and you can trial it for, you know, five to seven days to see if it works. If it works well, and, you know, you get to do it, and the patient gets to decide, is the therapy uh, beneficial for me, then they'll go on to the implant. And the implant is a very simple, very safe procedure. It's done in an outpatient setting, generally with just IV sedation um, and not really the need for general anesthesia. Jill, had you heard of uh, sacral neuromodulation? I had not, actually. I had been using a regimen of pills that my urogynecologist had prescribed, and (laughs) it worked. You know, it went from 27 to 29 times a day down to 15 to 17 times a day. Okay, okay. So for me, it was a real improvement, and I was very happy. Um... My doctor said that wasn't great. <laughs> you know, that's still no way to live. And so he talked to me about the axonics um, therapy. Mm-hmm. And I was told. I did a little bit of research and we went ahead with it. So, how has the device uh, changed your, your life? Oh, I just couldn't be somewhere. Um, I don't think about it anymore. Mm-hmm. I am just shy of four years of having it and I have forgotten what it's like to um, have it impact my life like it did. Mm -hmm. Um, I really have to remember what it was like because I am absolutely living my life like a normal human. I don't have to think about the bathroom. I can go on road trips. Um, I've been on four tropical vacations Mm -hmm. since I've had it put in because I no longer have to worry about being in an airport, it's given me my life back. And truly, the only time I think about it is when I have to charge it. Dr. Noblet, uh, what have you heard? Uh, what have the studies shown before it was deployed? Now, we um, have run probably the most contemporary study, and this was a, a study of 129 patients with urgency incontinence, and we followed patients out to two years 
And at that two-year mark, 93% were considered success, which is one of the highest success rates we've seen with this therapy. And, and more importantly, when you think about the magnitude of response, 37% of the patients were completely dry. Over 50% had a 90% or greater improvement and over 80% or 75% or greater improved. And we've not seen uh, the magnitude of response that we've seen with this study. And we believe it is you know, due to some of the advances in technology that Exonix has brought to bear, um, as well as you know, development and um, improving the surgical techniques that we have seen uh, since uh, approval of sacral neuromodulation back in the late 1990s. Well, give our listeners a, a website where we can learn more about this device and about Exonix as well. Yeah, you know, there's so much information that we would love to share. And if they would just go to axonics.com, that's A-X-O-N-I-C-S.com, we have a wealth of information for the patients uh, to find out if they um, are a good candidate. Um, they can look in that. And, and just so you know, Neil, it also um, not only treats urgency incontinence, but it can treat fecal incontinence mm. or bowel incontinence, which is a really devastating condition. And many patients suffer from what we call dual incontinence, where they may have urgency incontinence and fecal incontinence. So that is really a benefit as well as treating non-obstructive urinary retention. And there's information on our website on all of that. Well, doctor, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio as uh, you as well, Jill. Thank you both for joining us here. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Neil. It's been a pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Karen Noblet and uh, Jill. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.